Right, welcome back to Huna's Garage, a long overdue episode of Huna's Garage. Um, it has been a while since I've been able to get out here and film anything that I've been doing. I've been doing a few little bits and pieces, um, but ro not really enough to film, and not really that I've had a chance to sit down and edit and post up and everything else. So, yeah, sometimes life just gets in the way. But I've got a few hours today, so I thought we'll record it, we'll do an upload, um, just to give you all an idea that I haven't actually dropped off the planet and where we are at the moment. So, let's crack on with that then. Right, well as, I don't know if I've mentioned it, I'm sure I have, but as you know, this garage, it's not actually my garage. Um, it belongs to my grandparents. It's attached to their house, unfortunately. My grandfather died um, quite a few moments ago now, um, and obviously we've had to clear out some of his stuff. One of the effects of that is this. Now you've probably all seen this door before, but behind here, is another, I think they called it the garden room, which had a load of stuff in it, which we are now able to clear out. Um, rat bikes in here already. And the plan is that now this room is no longer used, um, I can now extend my workshop into here. So that's going, because that's just an old wardrobe. It is pretty much junk. These metal shelves are staying, because they're very useful. And then I'm hoping to move the workshop in here and then leave this area of the garage to store the bikes and the parts in. As you can see, fudge is already here. So that's the first part. That's an, sort of another project that's ongoing. TZR is out. The other thing was the fuel tank. Um, I had lots of hassle trying to clean this. You remember I had this green paint on it that's ju that was just it was a nightmare to remove you can remove it by sanding you can remove it by um the uh angle grinder with flapper disc it wasn't coming off nitromorse wouldn't even touch this paint i'm telling i have no idea what it is but i coated this thing in nitromorse still nothing at all in the end i got you have to excuse the state of the workbench where is it this thing there we go I've got this thing, which attaches to the angle grinder, and that got it off. But in doing so, let's just turn this up on the side. I've noticed there's a hole there, and that's actually not one of the worst ones. The other ones on this side, let's see if we can focus in on that. There we go. There's a couple there. There's a load here. Um, and more up here and it's quite a this stuff I think it's liquid metal or something I'm not sure what it is um, but I think this has been used to clean not clean block the holes that were here originally um, and when I was going around with that disc thing this stuff was just flowing like I don't know grease I guess it's the only way I can describe it it's not actually grease but it was the blades went over it it moved like grease and I think that there's some holes a big hole there and a big hole there so that was a pain in the ass, especially since now it's hold on the outside. These weren't the only thing. The only thing that was covering these really was that paint. So I'm glad I found those. I don't know if we're going to be able to see on the inside, but oh, I don't know. I'm not going to say. But in there, it's, it's as rusty as hell. I don't think there's a shiny piece of metal on it. Let me see if I can. Um, so we just put stick the torch on. Uh, no, you're still not going to get it, even with a torch on, you're still not going to see it. But trust me, in there is as rusty as hell. So I'm thinking that that tank is probably dead. There's a couple of dents in it. One there, there's another one there. Again, they're nothing major, I can fill those or tap them out or whatever. But that, I think that tank is dead, so I'm now looking for another... TZR 2RK fuel tank, which I'm pretty gutted about. The other problem today, today's mission when I got out here was to try and get the seat to fit. I've had some issues fitting the seat. Um, it was to see if I can get the seat to fit. And the reason for that is if you look here, these don't, they're not level. They don't line up to each other. That's obviously not square. 
And the reason for that, I believe, is this dent here. I don't know how it happened. It was there when I got the bike. Um, I don't remember if the seat ever fitted. It was so long ago. But I think where whatever's happened there has caused this to sort of warp or come out of alignment. So I can't get the seat to fit because back over to the untidy workbench. This bit of the seat here fouls on that. So, and it looks like somebody's had a go. I don't know what it is, but this is obviously, that's not a factory weld. I'd be very surprised if that's a factory weld. So I don't know what damage has occurred there, um, which is a bit of a bit of a pig. Well, it's a total pig to be fair. So I've now got to just figure out whether I can straighten this frame out and how to straighten it out or whether or not I just need to get another frame and take all this off, transplant it over. Which is a pain in the ass considering I've paid to have this powder coated, but you know, this is a learning curve. That's the idea of this bike, is that it's a learning curve for me to learn on. <laughs> I can't put it any simpler than that. So, you know, the thing is, is I'm going to make mistakes, I'm going to do things incorrectly, and that's all part of it. You, you take from that and you learn from that. So that's that problem with the uh, with the seat. Um, yeah, so that's where we are on that at the moment. I've got I've actually got two seats. I bought a, when I saw that when I got given this, I was searching on eBay because we had to cut the swing arm out because the pivot bolt that bolt there was seized and we couldn't undo it. We couldn't get it out. And in the end, we had to cut it out. And I wanted another pivot bolt. And they were like 20, even second hand ones were like 20 quid on eBay. And I did a search for just TZR project. And up came another TZR. And it was basically a TZR in a box without a frame. There was a, the spare engine, um, a full fairing set, and a load of other bits and pieces, including another swing arm with a pivot bolt in it. And I bought, I got all that for 52 quid. So... There is almost two TZRs in this garage. There was another tank with it um, that was in better condition than this. The petrol cap, however, was on, and we didn't have a key. The, the guy that I got it from didn't have a key for it. And um, a friend of mine, I don't know why, I, I still don't know why, we tried drilling the petrol cap out to get the petrol cap out so we could use the tank, and then for some reason he thought it would be a good idea to stamp on the petrol cap causing all of this to then dent in massive damage and I have, I still don't know why he did it um, but there we go so that's pretty much rendered that tank completely useless that's now gone um, so yeah so I have a few hours in the garage to crack on and I really don't have a lot to crack on with the only other thing that I've seen is obviously at the moment I'm using yeah, this great big unsightly horn as a test horn but if we come over here this is the other FJ the one with the knocking noise on the engine which <laughs> I've completed all the other projects in about 50 years time the intention was is to turn this into some sort of track bike um, just for something to do I guess um, I did buy these two black shell horns they're the same as are on the front of that bike but in black so I'm thinking rather than using that unsightly grey thing, it might be an idea. Because this you don't need a horns for a track bike, so I can take those off, put them on there. So that's going to be the next thing for today. I've asked a friend of mine what to do about this frame. And he's one of those he's one of those friends that if he was to say to me, look mate, the way you fix that is you dress up in a pink tutu and dance around the garage I'd probably dress I trust I trust his word basically and if he tells me that the best way to do that is to throw that away get another frame in then I'll do that or if he tells me that this is fixable then I'll do that but no I bow down to his knowledge considering mine is so lacking but it's nice to get back out it's nice to carry on so what we'll do now is we'll uh, transfer the horns from that bike onto this bike right quick update on how things have or, or 
I've not really progressed very far today. These both work. I tested them on that battery, which is also knackered. It's showing up on the Optimate. These things are brilliant. If you haven't got one of these, get one. They're fantastic. Um, as weak, it gives you a thing that you can see there, weak, strong. So when it charges your battery, it gives you some idea of battery condition. So that one is weak. Good enough to test the horn with though. But again, that's the one for the TZR, so that's going to need to be replaced. These are, well, they work. They're in pretty crappy condition though. And the case, I think it's on this one, is split. Is it that one? It's one of them. It is broken. There it is. Ta da! Right, so that's broken. Um, it's not a major issue really, but if you're going to do a project like this then if you're going to take the time and to make it look nice then you really want nice things to go on it I think but they're they're good enough I can't actually fit them to the bike I spent ages trying to get that out including stripping this down to try and get this out but that is seized in so when you turn that or try and turn that bolt the whole thing goes so I've put them on the I've tested them on there they work they're not very good they'll do for the moment for testing but I haven't actually had a chance to fit anything to the bike yet it's just been one of those days out here but I think those are going to look good on the front nice and loud let me make it um, heard when I'm riding to and from work on it and that's what this bike is eventually going to be is going to be the day-to-day -day getting to and from work bike right now so I've had a message back and a conversation with my mate about this dent here causing this to be out of line. If this bit here, the subframe, um, was only attached to the bike by bolts, and we could unbolt all of this and replace it with another one, but it's not, it's welded on. So there's two options. Hammer this out, or beat this out, or heat it and bend it back out again, so that it all lines up to get the seat on, job done um, or it's a complete frame swap frame swap even um, the lesson that I've learned from this because as I said this is a learning curve is don't powder coat anything until you're absolutely sure that everything you do fits um, I was certain that it was when I took it apart I don't remember if the saddle ever fitted to it um, but I was certain that it did but obviously it doesn't so this whole exercise, building all this back up again after this has been powder coated and everything else has been, I wouldn't say a waste of time because obviously learning the rewire and everything else is obviously part of it. But certainly now I've got to take all of this off in order to be able to brute force or heat this frame back into some sort of shape. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with it but probably more annoyed with myself for not spotting it I think you can actually see where that dent is the frame sort of almost comes in this side so I don't know but well I do know first things first I'm gonna to have to take all of this off to see if I can get that straightened back out again the chances are that brute force will damage the powder coat that's on it and that certainly if I have to heat it that's going to damage the powder coat that's on it. So this whole, all of this is then going to have to come out to get powder coated again, which is a pain in the ass. But you know, it is what it is. Lesson learnt and all that. So let's get all this off. Right. So that's the back end taken off. The wiring's all tucked up over there. I'm not looking forward to redoing that again. <laughs> And it's my, it really is my own stupid fault for not, I mean this, when I had the frame done, um, was obviously back at the start of this project before I even started recording these videos. Um, and I just, you know, you just make the assumption, I guess, that you're going to do it and it's all fine and it's all good. And this is one of the things that happens. Now, I don't know if it's going to come out on the camera, but that frame rail is fairly straight. This one is not, I'm not sure if you can see like the banana effect that it has. It is curved sort of that way. 
Um, let me grab the tape measure. Actually, let me grab the tape measure with my other hand. So this bit down here, we have a distance of about 14 centimeters or so. The 14, it's actually 14.3 to my eye, although the camera for some reason isn't really showing it as well as it should. 14.3. At this end, it is actually 40, about 14.8. The yeah, let's hold you up. It's about 14.8, but at this point here, where the narrowest part is. It goes down to three point something. So obviously the damage that this dent is has bent this frame that way. So it's curved like that. So what I now need to try and figure out is how to push that that way. Now I could brace it off that side, I don't know, put a car jack in it or something, a scissor jack, and try and push it out. But there's a possibility that that's stronger than that. And so it will just push that way because if it's bent that way any pressure going that way is going to you're going to have to i don't know the best way to put it you're going to have to push against that bend going this way so that would say to me that it's probably just going to push that out i don't know that's what it seems to me so i need to find a way of pushing that that way to straighten this banana effect out this back end i don't know if this has been done as a result of this. What I showed you earlier, let's get it up close. I don't know if it'll focus, but it seems to be more interested in focusing on what's what. That to me does not look like a factory weld in any way, size, shape, or form. That looks to me like this has snapped and that's just been sort of sort of grunched back on it. I don't know if grunch is a word. It's a word now, but it literally looks like it's been bodged back on again. That to me looks possibly closer to a factory weld. But I think that whatever damage has caused that to banana out, let's see if you can see it better like that. But whatever damage has caused that to banana out has snapped that. And so they've, I don't know, I don't know if they've, I don't know if that was worse and they've straightened it or what. But you can see quite clearly that that is not, line it up, that is not straight. This is further back than that one so the two choices are have a bash at getting this straight or just buy another frame given the fact that it is possibly a frame swap if i can't do that then there's nothing wrong with me having to go to try and straighten this out all i've got to do is figure out the best way to straighten that out and how to do it it might be a case of um heat all this up and then hammer it um or just hit it with a rubber mallet till it goes that way and hopefully that then pulls this in. I don't know. It might be a case of you have to bod, scrap it, throw it all away, get another frame. I have seen one on eBay for about 100 it's about 100 pounds including postage and packing but it doesn't come with a V5 and you do need a V5 with it. And it will charge you extra. But yeah. That's the state of play at the moment. So almost, well, it's not really back to square one, but, you know, it is a bit of a knockback. But then, like I said, it is a learning curve. Right, so that's the state of play as it stands at the moment. I'm not going to start hammering the frame or beating the crap out of it at the moment. I'll try and straighten that out. It's getting late. I don't really want to annoy my grandparents um, or my nan's uh, neighbours by starting loud noises. Um, at this time of night I'm a bit I am annoyed probably more at myself than anything else um, dry build dry build dry build what I should have done was rebuild the bike redo everything as it was um, before I had everything powder coated that's an expensive mistake but it is a mistake and it is something I'm going to have to take a lesson from dry build dry build dry build <laughs> um, no not really any steps forward today which is a bit of a shame but a lot of learning but not too many steps forward 
um, as far as progress, I think probably more actually step steps backwards, which is a bit annoying when this is the first time I've really had to get out here and do anything, and it's not really it's not really gone as I wanted it to, which I guess is one of those things you have to deal with when you're rebuilding a bike or doing a project like this. Um, but it is what it is. So yeah, I think the next time I come out, I'm going to see if I can get the frame straightened. If I can't straighten the frame, or if it is totally knackered, I'm going to have to start looking for another one. In the meantime, while I'm doing that, I'm not going to stop work on this bike. I'm going to carry on, and I think the next stage from that is to try and get it started. So I'll have to put the exhaust pipes back on, um, and everything else. I, have to, I've, I know the electrics work for the lights, the indicators, and everything else. I've not actually tested the electrics for the engine when it's un when it's running so it would be nice to get that done as well just to make sure that the wiring's okay just in case it isn't and i have to redo that as well so either either frame engine running for the next stage and see where we go uh, from there so there we are it is what it is this is half the fun i guess although it doesn't really feel like fun it is frustrating it is annoying but like i said probably more annoyed at myself than i am at anything else but there we go, it is what it is. I think I said that. Anyway, that's it. It has been fun being back out in the garage again. I have had a good day, despite the setbacks. But there you go. I'll see you on the next episode of Huna's Garage, I guess. Take care, ride safe.